T. 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 Palabok. Take one. Let's get it. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Cooking with Tea. Today, we're celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and we're making palabok, which is one of my favorite Filipino dishes of all time. Palabok is a noodle dish that traditionally takes up to days to make because the sauce has so much flavor and it's absolutely delicious, but I'm gonna show you guys how to make the palabok sauce in just about 30 minutes. Let's get into it. So we're gonna start out by getting a little bit of oil in our pot getting it really nice and hot. You wanna make sure it's like piping hot. Then we're gonna take some pork and we're gonna slice it pretty thinly. Just into little strips, manageable sized pieces. It's gonna shrink down when it cooks. So, you know, use your judgment for that. I'm using thinly sliced pork butt, AKA pork shoulder, it's not really the butt. Just in case you didn't know. Just, just in case you thought you were getting some butt, you're not, you're getting some shoulder. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the pork into this really hot pan. Yum. So I'm gonna season it really, really lightly with salt because a lot of the ingredients that are going into this dish are really umami, really salty, and I wanna make sure I'm not over seasoning. So when you think of palabok, there's all of the amazing toppings. We have pork, we have shrimp. When you think of palabok though, you think of those boiled eggs that are right on top, which is my favorite part. And I'm gonna get that going next. So while the pork is sprouting, we're gonna boil our eggs. So in goes the eggs. You're gonna make sure you're getting the pork nice and brown. Put some color on it. You don't have to cook the pork all the way just yet because it's gonna get tossed back in with the noodles later. Right now we're just rendering the fat out, getting some color and building some fond on the bottom of the pot so that when we make our stock, our sauce for the falabo, there's lots of flavor in it. Now that we got some beautiful caramelization on the pork, I'm gonna take it out, set it aside, and now we are going to get the shrimp cooking. Just a little bit. Season the shrimp really lightly. So we're gonna cook the shrimp in that rendered out pork fat, just a little bit. There's nothing worse than overcooked shrimp, so you literally just want to develop a little bit of color on it. So if you get a little bit of color on your shrimp, that's perfect. On one side, you can go ahead and take it out, set it aside. Beauty! Now that the shrimp is semi-cooked in color, and our pork is colored, we're going to cook the shrimp heads and the shells. I save the shells and the shrimp heads all the time because this is where most of the flavor is packed. So if you do this recipe, make sure you guys um, ask your butcher to give you guys shrimp with the shells on. So the shells are going into that same pot. Add just a touch more oil. Put this down a bit. It smells so amazing in here. I love the smell of shrimp shells. I honestly eat shrimp shells. They're great. A lot of people are like, you're eating the shell? And I'm like, yeah, that's where all the flavor is. Especially when they're fried. It's so freaking good. Cooking that out until they're nice and vibrant. I'm gonna add some water. Yum! Look at that, look at the color on there. That's insane. So what we pretty much just did is made a really quick shrimp stock with the flavor from the pork that's at the bottom of the pot. You know, the shrimp flavoring. Pork and shrimp, I mean, Filipino's two favorite proteins. 
pork and shrimp. So I'm pretty much just going to bring the stock up until it's bubbling and then strain it out. I just want to extract the flavor from the shrimp shells. So while the stock's working, we're gonna prepare our bok choy. Bok choy typically isn't really seen in Balabo, but I love vegetables and I think everything needs some vibrancy and some texture and some color, some chlorophyll. So that's why we're getting into this right now. I'm gonna take the bok choy and cut it into eighths. Like this. This looks great. You guys can use whatever vegetable you guys have on hand. I personally just love bok choy. You can use green beans or sea thau. You could use all kind of different veggies. Cool. So that looks great. It's a good amount of bok choy to me. Set this aside for now. All right, so now the shrimp stock is bubbling and looks like it's about ready to get strained, which I'm gonna do now. Oof, look at all that flavor. Not the steam messing up the baby hairs now. That's not it. All right, shrimp shells, done though. By the color of the shrimp stock, you can tell there's so much flavor in it. And palabok traditionally is like a deep orange color, so I like to use shrimps, shrimp heads because they pack a lot of color as well as flavor. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. All right, so when making something super fast like this, when we're layering flavors, we wanna make sure each step of the way is perfectly seasoned and balanced. So I'm gonna add some garlic into this pot here. Garlic is a key ingredient in any Filipino cuisine, all right? We're also gonna add some sliced onions. And I'm gonna cook this in some crab paste. So bagu ong is pretty much just fermented crab paste. And it's super umami, it's super salty, and it's packed with a lot of deep seafood flavor. Since we're taking this traditional amazing recipe and cutting it down into literally 30 minutes, we're gonna need to build those flavors. So with the shrimp stock and the bagu ong, we're gonna make for a really, really in-depth stock in just a little bit of time. Put this down. A little bit more oil. It smells so freaking good, are you kidding me? Like in the Philippines, we like a lot of fermenty, deep, salty flavors. We have patis, we have bagu ong, we have tinapa that's going in this dish. And all those things are extremely salty, so you really wanna make sure that like you find the right balance between perfectly seasoned and delicious. So we're gonna cook the onions and the garlic down. The crab paste is also gonna be adding that note of orange color that we find in Palabo. And then we're going to add in, you could use anato seeds or you can use a chote powder, kind of the same thing. This is just like ground and this is like really good for like making sure you get that nice orange color in a little bit of time. So I'm gonna add that into the pan. Gonna go ahead and give it a little mixy mix. Okay, and into this pan, I'm gonna go ahead and add our stock back in. So instead of adding the onions and the garlic into the stock, while it was going, I decided to take it out and cook it down into the crab paste because it's just gonna add another note of flavor into the really quick sauce that we're making. So we're gonna go ahead and just mix this up a little bit. Right now is the perfect time to add in some calamansi juice. If you can't find calamansi juice, you can use lime juice. So good. We're gonna go ahead and add a few tablespoons in there and cook this down for about 10 minutes. So now we're gonna cook our noodles, uh, our pancit palabok. The noodles I'm using are excellent brands, palabok pancit noodles. These cook in about 12 minutes. There are some palabok noodles that take up to hours to soak, but that's why I like this brand, all right? Excellent brand, cooks in a little bit of time. So I'm gonna add our noodles into the boiling water. I like using these noodles versus like a bihon noodle because those are a little bit too thin, and like when it comes to palab palabok noodles, I want the pancit to be like chewy and thick and just delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my noodles in. 
And since the temperature dropped, I'm gonna go ahead and add the lid back on there. Set it to the side. This looks amazing. Yum. So good. That's bomb. For the amount of time it's been cooking, that's delicious. So mommy. Nudes are done. The noodles are done, y'all. Sunset is cooked. So now we're gonna peel our boiled eggs. You just wanna lightly crack on a flat surface. And the easiest way to do it is in some water. You could use the same bowl that you shocked your eggs in, or you could use the running water from the sink. But I like to do it in this. And then you get a perfectly peeled egg, just like that. That's the key. And you can't have falafel without boiled eggs. That's what I look forward to when it comes to falafel. That sauce, and then the boiled eggs that are on top. It's like I'm taking a cryo bath through my fingers right now. It's okay, we're almost there. Push through, push through. One, two, go, 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 move, move, move. All right, have you guys ever had balut? Balut? It's like a, a Filipino food delicacy. It's a duck egg that has an embryo inside of it. You have? How do you think about it? Did you eat it again? Same. Same. I was eating that thing, I was like, what? This is terrible. So our eggs are perfect and boiled. I'm gonna go ahead and slice them open. So just like that. Still a little soft. Perfect. Like, I like the center of it to be a lot more yellow than the outside. All right, y'all, we're gonna add a little bit of patis onto the boiled eggs. This right here is fish sauce. Like I said, us Filipinos love some fermenty fishiness. So this is pretty much just to salt our eggs. Gonna add just a little bit right on top. And that's just gonna sit and develop flavor while all the other things are working. While we're working on our kuchamat, all of our beautiful toppings, we're gonna cook some bok choy. So I'm adding a little bit of olive oil to a pan and I'm gonna throw in some bok choy into it. I personally love color on my bok choy. So I'm going to get a little bit of brown. A little veg action. Coolio. Into the bok choy, I'm also gonna add a little bit of white from the scallions. Just towards the very end. So when it comes to bok choy and all kinds of vegetables, I do not like my vegetables to be cooked all the way to mush. I like them to have texture. I like them to have some bite to it still. So I just want to get some color on the bok choy. Probably cook it for about four to five minutes at most. Look at that. Those are anato seeds. We use anato seeds a lot in Filipino cooking to kind of just like color things, flavor things a bit, but more so for like coloring. I'm soaking them in some hot water to add to the palabok at the end after I add my slurry in, just to kind of see if I need to loosen it up, but also to add more of a deeper orange color. Cause it's not palabok if it's not orange. So, palabok is also known for the crispy chicharron that sits on top of it. Chicharron is pork skin or chicken skin. And it's so good. Mm, so good. Why is chicharron so good? It's so nostalgic for me. Like, I feel like I ate chicharron a lot as a kid. Right? I just eat bags of this. The vinegar flavor, bomb. This that stuff right here. Pop it in the bag. And we're just gonna roll. around. So sometimes you can get it like super, super fine, but I want more texture on mine, so I'm gonna leave mine kind of, sort of chunky, just like this. Go ahead and pop that back in the bowl. Yum, look at that. So good. I know what I mean for dinner. A bag of pork rinds. As Jeff said, so funny what we eat. We cook all this all day, and then we go home and we eat a bag of pork rinds for dinner. 
This should be a crime. All right. The bok choy is perfect. It's nice and brown and soft. The scallions are cooked out a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer. Woo! That's great. So we have all of our lovely toppings. We have shrimp, pork, we have some scallions, we have our boiled eggs, we have chicharron, we have mung beans that we're gonna add into the palau book at the very last minute. And yeah, we have our tanapa. Now we're gonna make our palau book sauce thick. Bringing this deliciousness back over here. So there are many ways to thicken sauces. Typically in Asian cooking, we use a lot of slurries. So a slurry is pretty much 101 parts cornstarch and some type of hot liquid. I'm gonna be using the stock, because might as well. I'm gonna go right back into there anyways. And I'm just going to mix it up, pretty much into like paste. Oh, this smells so good. And then we're gonna transfer this back into the stock that we have in this pot. So now I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this into here. Make sure the cornstarch gets cooked out. So you wanna cook this out until the sauce gets thick, but also the starchiness is all the way cooked out. We're now gonna add in our tanapa, which is dry fermented fish, once again. Little fish that's been picked off the bones. It's really salty and super umami. So good, it's like a smoked fish. So there's a the smoky element, there's the fermented element, and it's super bomb. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this up and cook this out until it gets to the desired consistency. So this looks really nice and thick and luscious. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and bomb. Mm. I'm actually going to add just a little bit of anato water for some more orange color and to loosen it up just a tad bit. There we are. Perfect. All right, y'all, for the moment of truth, we're gonna add in our shrimp to the sauce. Mixy mix. Yes. We're gonna add our pork into the sauce. Oh my goodness, this looks so good. We're gonna cook this for about two more minutes just until the shrimp gets cooked out and the pork is nice and coated. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in the noodles. Make sure our noodles are coated in the sauce. Ooh, we're making a mess, guys. We wouldn't be cooking with tea if I was making a mess. Spill like things all over the place. We really wanna make sure that the noodles are coated evenly in the sauce. Look at that. Delicious. Delicious! I'm gonna add just a little sprouts for some nice refreshing texture and some vegetation. Cause we need our veggies, all right? Our veggies need us and we need them. Yes, ma'am. So, I'm gonna take my noodles. I'm gonna go noodles down. We're getting a little fancy with the palabok today, right? This is T's version of it. A little bit of my <laughs> fine dining restaurant experience. Flavors is going to smash though. Plating is just going to be a little bit different, all right? This is not Lola's palabok. This is T's palabok. And she will approve this message, okay? One more twirl. Beautiful. Now we're going to add some of our pork and our scrimps. Here and there, a little pork action, a little more shrimpies. Then we're going to get into our boiled eggs. It's like this, a little boiled egg. Here, here, and one for me. So good. I love boiled eggs. I keep boiled eggs every day. Mmm! Especially with patisse on it. So good. Add a little bit of greenery. Take some of the sauce right on top. Okay. A little bit of sauce in the egg. It's 
So we're gonna add some chicharron right on top. And some scallions. I can get into it, y'all. Beauty. All right, y'all, so since I don't have any fresh calamansi, and I think it needs a little bit of freshness, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze just a little bit of lime right on top. And there we have it. Tease for la book. This looks gas. So we have teas, beautiful plated version, but I'm gonna make, you know, classic, large style, you know, that you would get when you're having your family feast as well. I mean, yo! <laughs> and then, you know, you see it like this, you have the beautiful boiled egg. Just a little bit of bok choy here and there. Teach your own right on top. And then some scallions. So you have your restaurant style plated version and then you have the version that you would typically, typically see at a party. So there is family style palabok and then more of like personal restaurant -y vibes. Gonna hit it with a little bit of lime. Delish. This is very exciting for me right now. Palabok is one of those things that happen on special occasions in my family and this is a special occasion. I'm bringing palabok to cook with tea to celebrate Asian Pacific Heritage Month. So, Let's get into it. Mmm. So good. Bomb. This is something I'm always gonna request every holiday because it's my absolute favorite. Let's get into that egg. Mmm. The egg has like for such a creaminess. So freaking good. I got a lot of like shrimp notes in the sauce itself. Like the shrimp really comes through. Typically when you see like a quick palabok, like people add in shrimp cubes into the sauce, but with the shrimp heads and the crab bagoong, we really get a lot of like seafoody notes in it. I'm here for it. 10 out of 10. Mmm. Sada. So good. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to an episode of Cooking with Tea. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings. This is so good, guys. You guys gotta get into this. So good. You guys have to take some of this home. I mean, so much. Cause the thing about being Filipino, like, I don't, and black, I don't know what the proper portion is. Like, I be cooking for, like, the game. <laughs> it's crazy, like, who gonna do it on this palabo? Y'all better help me eat this.